can we radically orient our life towards the one who loves us, where he changes everything, where the apostles, you know, the apostles' lives are different, saints' lives are different, our lives can be different if we simply place our trust in this person called Jesus because that's what he desires and even more so, like things just look a lot different when he's a part of the, not just a solution, but he's a part of everything. And so that's the invitation I think for Lent that Father Mark Toops invites us to to sit in, but I think it's a, a life a lifelong yeah. thing, not just the season of Lent. It's something that every single day of our life should be like that. Your feet they don't fall to know And do every weather love You have on my shelter law So take me by the hand and lead me on Through the wilderness to that great beyond Hey, <laughs> I'm Father Mark Mary. Why were you whispering? I'm Father PT. <laughs> I'm Father Anderson. Happy Lent, everyone. <laughs> Father Angelus here. Happy Ash Wednesday. You're going to be chewing on the microphone for the- <laughs> that. Would, that would be a great Ash Wednesday penance. Why? Did he just smacked in the microphone the whole time? I was going to do it now, but now that you got your little sweatshirt on over there. I know. Like you started. Both guys- <clears throat> I'm going to take mine off, though. I don't know of an easy way to take mine on, off without causing a scene. But you're kind of like, you, you kind of rock this look you kind of look what's, like a bomb what's, what are you, <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna ask what's this look but you answer the question and saying what'd you say he looked like like a bomb a bomb <laughs> you look homeless oh thank you <laughs> oh, bro, you got the that. hat on you got you got the you got the headphones on kind of all trendy <laughs> i mean i can't put it over the top of it because the, the thing doesn't you fit so it, it works you you just work it bro well that's yeah. a fun transition to one <laughs> one question is there's four of us on this podcast. Mm. I'm aware of three of us having to be edited after an episode. <laughs> after we said removed. Gosh. Which of the which of us do you think I is the least probably, likely? I've definitely probably said things to that have edited. been edited. I have Father I've definitely edited. been edited. No, mm. edited. no, 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 definitely. I think I know I've been edited. Like, wait, what are you asking? I don't think you have to be edited. Somebody said something that everyone has said stuff. They're like, you can't say that, or mm-hmm. whatever. You need more context, or, mm-hmm. or something. And we end up taking in 200 it out. episodes. We've had to be epi- edited. I don't mm-hmm. think Father PT's probably said anything that has to be epi- edited. Really? I feel like I'm, I'm out of pocket a lot. I think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, meaning, meaning, I think you are the one up to this point who has been unedited. Really? Wow. What that did surprises I do? me. You've done a lot. Do I have to start? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, last episode. No. For episode, I kind of like to know what I did. I think I, I don't actually know. For our 200th episode, we're gonna go through right. stuff all the stuff. We're only gonna say the things that we cut out. <laughs> Wait, that surprises me. I've been edited, huh? That you have not been. Now this is like a goal. <laughs> as far as I, <laughs> I know, because every now and then, I mean, they sometimes cut something that I'm, I'm not sure totally. I, I don't double check what it is all the time. But every now and then, I'm I after this, I put a little note and I send a little email. Like, hey, Father Innocent said this. People may not get it. Can you remove that? <laughs> but he doesn't tell me. Wow. I'm sorry, bro. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, well, the first time it ever ha- it happened, I think, to you was maybe last time we recorded. What was it? <laughs> it, oh, no, man. <laughs> it was, it had to do with, are you part of the band? Are you with the band? <laughs> and it's like, well, I, okay, I don't know if people will understand how that I was just okay. trying to make a funny parson joke. No, you got to edit this out again. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> this is a great. I appreciate that a lot, actually. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. I'm looking out for everybody. Including myself, first and foremost. Um, I think the edgy things I say need to stay in <laughs> for effect. Because you're trying to. Because you are pretty edgy. Your, your brand is trying to be like the controversial <laughs> Angst, one. Angsty. <laughs> 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 Do you add stuff in? Meaning all of a sudden there's like <laughs> 10 extra minutes in the podcast of you just talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I actually do it for you guys and I, I, I imitate your voices. <laughs> How would you imitate Father Angels? Whoa. Or I Father Innocent? I, I don't have a funny invitation. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. Never mind. <clears throat> so here's, here's something that happened recently that's going to kick us off into what we're doing tonight. Somewhat recently. Actually, not recently at all. That's, that's the, within the last calendar year, but not very recently. <laughs> I had a behind the scenes experience of the internal life of two religious sisters. Hmm. One of them was going to be giving some sort of talk and she was a little bit nervous before it. And the sister beforehand did her sisterly hype up thing. 
And I was like, sister, you are beloved. You are chosen. <laughs> you are anointed. He is. W-. It was. It was like very. It was very. It was just very womanly, but it was also very sisterly mm-hmm. and very kind of encouraging. So, <laughs> I think if, <laughs> it's gonna have to be edited. It was out. more funny in my mind, or more we, endearing. But you got the point. We talk about this before. Not on here. Oh, you are, sister, okay. sister, you are beloved. You are chosen. You are anointed. He is, you are pre- pre- called for this moment. Um, Beautiful. You are bride. You are. It was. It was very endearing. Um, and kind of again, that was kind of we talked about a little bit how we would be the opposite of. Like, oh yeah, this gonna be trash. Yeah, <laughs> bro, you really need to get over. Oh yeah, because we were talking about focus. Mm-hmm. Where you guys yeah. go to each other talk. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, yeah. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, we're more like, bro. Probably just don't do it. <laughs> It's not. Just keep it. Bro, you're embarrassed. Maybe you're going to do it. Just keep it short. <laughs> the uh, the other day we were doing something right together and you sat by me. There was nothing. Anyway. For the day of recollection? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like before. Meaning I was, I'm just getting my thoughts together. I was like, all right, cool. You know, and <clears throat> not that like I was nervous or anything like that, but I have been in situations where guys like, hey, don't screw it up. Okay. You know, <laughs> like Jeez. make sure you don't do, uh, don't preach heresy. Oh, th- thanks. Like, that's really encouraging. That's what I need to hear right now. That's on my mind the whole time then. Oh, what's mm-hmm. on my mind is me giving the talk and you in the back just writing your talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know if that's what happened. But it's what doesn't I mean. hurt. doesn't hurt. Um, so here's what, why mm. I bring that up is because this is, I was Ash, wondering this if is the Ash going, Wednesday going episode. And this is what we're trying to do. You know, we're trying to hype each other up. We got this. We're going into Lent. That, that, was, that was the idea. That was the connection. Did it mm. work? Mm. <laughs> I'm hyped up, bro. I can tell in your voice, Andy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, also, you just heard <laughs> in two days a new song comes out. I don't think you'll get to hear it until then. In two days, a new Father Isaiah. You just heard Blind Man again. Oh. So happy Blind Man. We've been asking for What's weeks number for this. Two? Two? What's number Bro, two? you gotta make the, you gotta make the people earn it. You gotta want it. Pine, pine, pine for it. Sorry. <laughs> you're, you're a wreck. Anyway, so thank you again to all of our benefactors, and here we are for making the podcast possible. And here we are in Ash Wednesday working through Father Mark Toops's Ascension Lenten devotional. And I love, love, love how he started his Ash Wednesday reflection. And I just feel like we're all coming about it, uh, coming to it from the same place. Being Christian is not about me. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, being Christian is is not about my choice for God. Being Christian cannot be defined by rules or ri- rituals, nor can it be summed up in policies or piety. Of course, all these things are part of the holy order of Catholicism, but, but being Christian is essentially about a person and his name is Jesus. To go on, if Christianity is about a person, that means Lent is also about a person. Lent is not simply about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Those disciplines help us to focus on what we need to focus on, namely a person. Lent is about a person. Lent is about Jesus. And why I love this, and I think we're all going to love this, is because I think a temptation that we all experience is to make our Lent, Lenten journey and our Lenten practices about us. And it's not about us. It's about Jesus. And all that we're doing, the prayer, the fasting, the almsgiving, is to be oriented to us, growing in dependence on him in love of him and gratitude for him and reliance on him in um, receptivity kind of radical receptivity of him and that my friends is what lent 2024 is all about make some noise go ahead hit it (laughs) (laughs) um you done yeah (laughs) okay i just don't want to make i don't want to step on the call or anything like that Somebody proposed something to me recently. I was I was discerning something and I had asked somebody to pray about it and uh, they offered me this image. And it's not, I think, yeah, I don't think it's unique, but it's, I just never heard it before. But the person said, just use this as a discerning tool, um, joy. And I was thinking, oh, if it makes me happy or not, like that's the, the tool. He's like, I was like, can you explain some more? And the person said, no, like joy as an acronym, Jesus, others, yourself. Like if I'm approaching things first, with is this for Jesus or is this for others or is this for myself? I think this is a helpful, once again, a tool that we can use to discern. And I think specifically about Lent, as as Father Tubes talks about, it's not about 
like making others feel better. It's not making myself feel better. It's not this this project that we're gonna embark on during the season of Lent, but it's it's about Jesus ultimately. And <clears throat> if we keep the first things first, or we keep the priorities, the priority or whatever the expression is, um, that's the place where we'll experience the most peace, the most joy, the most, I guess, effectiveness that, that God desires for us to experience. But I think there's a some, somewhat provocative, but like just live our Lent with joy. Uh, once again, that desire to first encounter the heart of Jesus and from that to be moved for others and then finally for ourselves. And it's not <clears throat> to make sure we're not falling into this. It's not, I'm gonna hate myself um, and I can't think about myself in any way. And I'm gonna try to uh, purposely bring up these things that make sure I know how bad of a person I am. Because uh, once again, if we're moving with Jesus and we're moving with, a, with his heart, um, not just for us, but for others, then we'll always be spoken to in a way that's affirming. We'll always be spoken to in a way that's that's dignifying because that's how he looks at us. He doesn't look at us as some person that needs to be corrected or something that needs to be figured out, but he looks at us as his. And so just to, once again, just kind of use that, I think, as a paradigm as far as Jesus, others, and yourself. I, I'm a big fan of Father Mark Toops. He's a big institute for priestly formation guy. And so I think he's just... He is a great writer, great preacher, and I think he just has a way of capturing the reality of things. So praise God uh, for him. Uh, maybe I, I I do realize today is Ash Wednesday, so we de- we don't necessarily have a. This podcast is not going to provide a lot of prep prep time. We're we're at the game time. We're in it, <laughs> but I do think it could be worth um, just inviting our our listeners to to take some time in prayer actually. And it's vulnerable and it, it, it could be a risk. Are you right? Are you going to edit no. me out? No, no, no. So far you're I'm going to be, <laughs> be, be minute number 12, 1232. Okay. I'm going to swear. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be. I'm pretty sure it's about. happened once in 200 episodes. You don't have to worry about it too much. I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to be myself. I don't care what you think you're going to edit me out. <laughs> <laughs> we're sticking up for me Andrew. you with me <laughs> doing great bro. doing great you're beloved you are um, chosen I'm chosen I, re- I receive you are that anointed. shut up <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I talking about oh so we, I know I realize it's game time but I do think it'd be helpful within within this first week of Lent if you and I'm assuming a lot of us have already done this um, in some in some capacity to actually sit down in prayer and create the the, the silent sacred space of our own prayer wherever it is within before the blessed sacrament and in, in the silence of our own homes, and again to make Lent about Jesus, we have to ask. I want I want to just encourage people to ask Him what He wants this Lent to be about, right? Because sometimes I think we go and we fall into this in religious life. Like we have legislation that tells us what to do. And we, it's easy. I have my go-to things that I do for Lent. And I think more and more it becomes Jesus-centered. Like I do want to make an offering to Jesus. I do want to come become closer to Jesus. But I think it's a really sacred space and, and a really contemplative reality that I can sit down in prayer and I can ask Jesus, Jesus, Lent 2024, like what do you desire this Lent to be for us? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and here's the vulnerable part, brothers and sisters, we actually have to make space to listen, right? We actually have to make an act of faith that if I, if I create some silence to say, okay, Jesus, I'm going to ask you this question and I'm going to just open my heart. And, and again, it's not magic. We're not like pulling stuff from thin air. It's like, Ooh, I, you know, did he say that or this, but like, what's the movement of the Holy spirit in my heart as, as I listen to Jesus and what he desires for this Lent for, for me, for it to be right. And I think, that's a good place to start. And I don't think we, again, we don't have to make it kind of uh, like too complicated, but I do think if we haven't done that yet, I, Jesus, what do you desire this one to be for me and you? Like, I, I, Jesus, what is the thing that's standing in the way? Or what's, what's, how do you want my prayer life, our prayer life to go deeper? Um, and just ask these questions and then, and then take some time of silence to, to he's going to respond and he's going to speak to you like he always speaks to you in your, in different ways. Um, I think that could be a real concrete step that what Father Mark, Mark is talking about is to, instead of just making our list be, with what I think is a good idea, is taking space in my own contemplative life and my own prayer to ask Jesus what he wants this Lent to be. Um, I think it could be really beautiful. It's so true. Like all of us have that experience of making the reference point for Lent ourselves, right? The self-focus. And I just was thinking... We're just thinking a little bit um, recently visiting some families and you guys know like when kids, when you ask a little kid to do something, 
they don't feel like they have the authority or the autonomy to, to say yes. So, Hey, so-and-so, do you want a cookie? What do they first do? They look to their mom. They look through their, they look for someone who has authority in their life. So it's like a line of sight thing. Like they look around and the mom says, yeah, you can, or you, Hey, you want to go play outside? And then they look for mom like, yep, we're good. Okay. I can go do that. Right. So I was just thinking for Len, like, is it, it's a line of sight thing. Like, are we looking at ourselves? Are we caught in ourselves? Or, or do we have this moment where we look to Jesus or we look to our lady? Like we, we look to someone else to define what's happening for us. Right. Cause I think we get sucked in and I think life becomes busy. Life becomes super crazy and and then we lose the line of sight and then we're just kind of caught in ourselves right and even busy like religious things like father talks about piety things we can lose the line of sight and we can get caught in ourselves even in the stuff that we do or the stuff that we give up or the penances or the almsgiving the donations that we make all this stuff we can still not do that with any sort of line of sight with jesus right so kind of like in the childlike reality we, we begin with who has authority here in this in this season um, do I, do I want to have my own autonomy? Do I want to have my own authority or responsibility? Or am I going to stop and be, okay, all the things, the reference point for my Lent is now Jesus. And I, everything I do, everything I'm asked, everything I want, might want to do, I look to him and his gaze and his eyes and his heart. Okay, Lord, what do you want to do? How do you want to lead me? Um, it's just super helpful because again, we can, we can be halfway through Lent. We're still focused on ourselves. Mm. You know, but doing doing the things that we do, we should do during that, or showing up to the things we should show up, or checking the boxes. If we lose that line of sight, um, then we just get caught in ourselves. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I had this image when Ange was talking about uh, Lent, kind of like just kind of looking at ourselves, like, and I don't. Again, I I'm <laughs> I don't want to be kind of spicy here, but the. I'm just carrying a lot of fear around about it. <laughs> I'll just hold the button down yeah. to save the editing team. And the, uh, but that would actually make it worse. Yeah. What that? <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, yeah. minute, eight, minute 18. Well, like how, and I, it's funny because it's playful, but like how crappy would it be to go in the desert by yourself? Mm. We have 40 days to go in the desert and Jesus does it so we don't have to do it by ourselves. Mm. Like we go in with Jesus. That's the only way this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right, and I feel deeply. I've written on this a few times. <laughs> no, you feel deeply about this. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Still available with Blessed Is She. Yeah. Liar, liar, pants There's on fire. Some college, college students wrote what? us recently and asked for bulk rate. <laughs> so your bulk rate, Blessed Is She? Do they realize like two is, doesn't qualify? For <laughs> no, anyway, <I'm> sorry. So, <laughs> but we don't go in the desert by ourselves. We go with the Lord. That's the only way this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right? So this this experience to, to start Lent is 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 to walk with Jesus. And um, just as such a beautiful prayer, um, yeah, just, just the grace of Jesus walks in and says, will you go with me? Will you stay with me? And I mean, and, and he's the re reference point for everything, right? And I, and I think that's what makes everything else make sense. Um, I just feel that deeply because like how, like go into the desert by yourself, with yourself, stuck in yourself, like it, that's just horrible. And, and that's not what Lenny is called to be, to go in with Jesus. Um, I think, it, I think that's, I, that make, that's gonna make sense of everything. Yeah. And uh, this is a season in the church, Lent, right? And like the focus should always be about Jesus. And it's not just that, because I think sometimes too, it's as we go hard during Lent, or and we've spoken about this before, like this is a time where I'm going to do all these different things, and and it is a good practice to do some uh, some Lenten practices. But just like realizing every single season should be about Jesus, you know, like it's not like Advent all of a sudden it's, it's less focused on Jesus, or ordinary time is less focused on Jesus, or Christmas season is less focused on Jesus. But there's different aspects in which Jesus desires to to be accompanied uh, by us, but even more so, He desires to accompany us in our specific things that we're going through, and so. If you just first, once again, speak from that place of, of Jesus, this Lent, how am I, like, how do you want to go in the desert? Or how, I'm sorry, how do you want me to go in the desert with you? Um, or Jesus, like, where where is the place that you want to to meet me this de this uh, this Lent? He'll speak to you. Um, but once again, it's it's just trying to, to gain or trying to see that aspect of the heart that the Lord is trying to reveal to us during this specific season. Because I think seasons provide like particular mm -hmm. fruits and mm -hmm. particular graces, which is why the church holds them up. And and this is a point in the time in our, in our year that we're able to now go deeper in the meditations as far as like his crucifixion, his passion, and, and allow that to be a part of our life and a part of our story. But once again, it starts with looking at him and asking him to influence these things as opposed to 
we're going to know where to take off for the or the uh, departure point is. Thank you, Father Pierre Chisant. You're welcome, Father Mark Mary, Maximilian Ames. <clears throat> the the image I have that I want to throw out or the reference is ego lifting. We're all familiar with ego lifting, right? I'm not, please. At all, actually. What? You, what are you talking about? <laughs> Do you know the concept? <laughs> no. 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 Oh, really? No one even knows the concept. <laughs> I'm not. Ego even, lifting? Ego, I, ego. Do you even I lift, you said, bro? Ego. Ego. That's what I hear. Ego, yeah. ego, ego. ego. I thought you said ego lifting. Come on. Oh my God. Are we, wait. It's like an eagle benching? wrestling. Like, it's like a wrestling shoulder. Sports? It's a yeah. shoulder yeah. exercise. The eagle. Are we, yeah, are we benching eagles? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I <laughs> They're endangered species. But if you said ego lifting, I still don't know what you mean. That makes sense. That gives me some more some more context. <laughs> ego lifting, one word. Um, so, so the ego lifting is the thing generally i think it's a trap that young men fall into where they're going they're in the gym mm. and they're doing some sort of exercise this is why i'm not familiar with it because <laughs> i'm never in the gym um and the idea is it's like it's whatever say you're doing like dumbbell curls or something like that is the the what the the person the young the sort of amateur is most concerned about is putting having as much weight on the the bar as, as possible for their own ego but also so other people like see it but generally what would happen in an ego lift situation is that like uh the form is greatly compromised and it's like it becomes like a full body lift instead of actually like a bicep curl and so it looks like you're doing a lot but in reality it's somewhat dangerous because it's like possibly get injured but also like you're just not really working the muscle that you intended to work and so okay, okay. you know the the pros in the gym they see they see the little guy and, they're like, this is, yeah. and they see him like doing the full body rock thing and it's like okay well i'm not impressed i could just see that this you're just trying to do too much eagle eagle lifting <laughs> yeah, I can ah, just see ah. it. and then that's what happens everyone starts to call ah, and they point ah. <laughs> i think our eagle our eagle impressions are all pretty on point yeah <laughs> i think we got that one down <laughs> Um, if but you want, I, so sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you I'll want say it? if you want us to show up to your kid's birthday party, we can call <laughs> the Eagles. Yep. For, on the cruise. Is, on I was going to say, Poco, Poco, Poco talk about the cruise again. <laughs> um, Lenten cruise? Just saying. <laughs> but I think, like, for example, I remember being, uh, whatever it was, I was in college and I had a spiritual director so at the time because I was pursuing the priesthood. And I was like, okay, so what I want to do for Lent is I want to, you know, have a meatless Lent. And he said, no. <laughs> uh, no. and it was the right choice because right that was like essentially that was like an e ego fast like I want to do something really hard not because I really know what I'm doing but because I want to do something that seems really hard just for myself to feel good about myself but also you know I'm sure I could sleep. Oh, so, oh no sorry I can't have that oh well, you know what I mean wait why no I can't really talk about it but, okay I guess I'm, I can't I can't I give up me for a minute. no but I'm sorry you know um, that is you <laughs> No, I can't. Talk. I, no, don't worry about. It. I'm sorry. Do you have any tuna? Um. <laughs> anyway, but but that was like he kind of got it. And so the problem with ego lifting in reality is that like it doesn't really work the muscle, and it kind of actually can can hurt you eventually. You know. Um. And I think the problem is that if if we do our penances really, and we focus on the aesthetical thing and doing the hard thing and the intense thing, is oftentimes again what like it's about. It's kind of an ego fast. Um. <laughs> And, and the problem with it is it, it uh, comes from and it reinforces an, a, an unhealthy or imperfect understanding of who God is and what he asks of us. And and that's why we actually want to like push against it, pre protect people from doing it. It's like, no, what you're, what you're doing isn't what you think you're doing. What you're doing is also like, it's reinf reinforcing a, like a, a false understanding of what God is asking of you. And, and so we want to kind of not do that. And, and I really do believe it's part of the wisdom of religious life, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, is you kind of have to earn doing hard penances. Like the, when you first come in the door, um, essentially like you're not formed well enough to actually do the intense hard things. But you kind of need to earn that you actually understand, have a properly formed spirituality and pro properly understood, understood understanding of who God is and discipleship for you then to kind of have the, the proper soil for doing uh, the harder things is that that's kind of you guys yeah. would agree with that right we i kind of call it the law of graduality like there's your gradual mm. in in mm, do you like that i do um it's a it's a um and this is like a this is kind of this principles in the church is that there's a gradual way of understanding things and and um 
Yeah. So it's, it, when, for instance, when we were preparing t- to walk with the Pashans through their, th- through this Lent, right. And, and I don't have to get into the details, but we look at, we look at the, the gradual approach to understanding fasting and living fasting. And it's, it's actually a two years, it's a two year on ramp in Pashan and novitiate. And you're allowed to do stuff you're incrementally. And so, you know, so in Pashan you're allowed to do some things and it's, it's pretty simple. And it's funny because this culture, guys really struggle. Like, Father, I just want to like do these things. You're like, well, yeah, you're not going to do that, right? So they have to, they're very limited what they can do. Could you give an example of something you could be allowed to do and something you wouldn't be allowed to do? Hmm. Is that okay? Yeah, so I'm going to just give an example Great. of what I asked the Pashans to do. So um, nice. so for for Lent, um, we, we live um, a general sense of all the friars, we live a friar fast. And so that means every every day, uh, besides like feast days or, or or solemnities like Sundays, we live a friar fast, which we call like we do two small meals and one one normal sized meal, and we don't eat between meals um, as a baseline, right? And and that, like there's there's other things that guys can add, but there's there's a sense of leaning into um, to the, the the friar fast in that way. Well, we do that every day of Lent, besides again Sundays and things like that. <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm not. I don't expect the friars to do that. Or, Posh, I, I, what? I don't expect the the, oh. uh, the Pashans to do that. I was going to move here. So we do that in Advent actually and Lent. So Advent, I allow them to only do two days a week of that. And I and I, I focus in, okay, what's your small meals look like and what's your normal size meal look like? Okay, so Father, I'm going to have a bowl of oatmeal in the morning and then I'm going to have a salad and some tuna for lunch and then I'm going to have a normal size meal. And you can do that two days a week and then the other days you have to eat normally. Then when we get to Lent, which we're starting now, they can do that three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And again, focused on just two simple meals that I'm like, I'm going hungry. I'm eating something, but, and, and healthy and, and, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be it's simple and, and go like, and walk away from the, from the table hungry. And then I'm going to have a normal meal, which is usually dinner, which is, it's, it's a, a lot more, there's like a protein vegetable. It's a lot more substantial. They're allowed to do that three days a week. Then when they enter novitiate, they're allowed to do that for Advent three days a week if that makes sense. So we're building. And then, and then for, for the Lent in novitiate, that's when they, f- they, f- they first fully take on the, the full fast, if that makes sense. Yep. So there's, there, there's an on-ramp to this and be in, and at the, at the same time, what you're cultivating is, okay, why do we do this? What's the spirituality? What's the movement of my heart? Why would you, why on earth would you not eat or, or kind of starve yourself or discipline yourself when it comes to, to, to certain things, particularly eating or the other passions or, you know, like silence or like all these different things. Why would you do that? Right. And so I'm teaching them these things. And then what's really beautiful is then they can, they start to respond with like a really beautiful desire that I want to actually do this because there's a lot of me father that stands in the way of my relationship with Jesus. There's a lot of my desires. There's a lot of distractions. There's a, like, I'm full of myself and and when I when I start to fast and and let go of food, it actually makes room in my heart. I'm I'm less full of myself or 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 less full of things that I feed myself with, and it leaves room for me to be hungry for Jesus in a deeper way. Right. And when they start to verbalize that, that's what I'm looking for as time goes on. And that's when I'm open for them to say, Hey Father, like I feel like I want to do more when they start talking about their desire to grow in intimacy and to die to self and, and to, to lose themselves so I can, I can be more available or, or more open to what Jesus wants to do. When they start to verbalize this over, over a year, <laughs> um, then I really just like cultivate that and bless that. And then that's when I'm open for them to doing, to doing more things or talking about going deeper. But if they're coming from a place of performance or like, okay, I'm like, I got to do this or when they're, when they're really like hyper vigilant on what they want to do without a sense of relationship with the Lord, I, I'm just saying, bro, we have to, I need, we need to, we need to talk more about how I'm like our hearts here and like how I want to form you. And I'm just going to ask you to stick to like what I asked you to do, if that makes sense. So that's a long, that's a, a lot to say. I don't know if I answered your question, but. That's helpful for other reasons, but, <laughs> um, yeah, and this whole thing of like ego lifting, um, like once again, this is about Jesus. And I think that, not the two mysteries, but we begin Lent in the desert, right? With looking at 
Jesus is 40 days in the desert. Um, we stay with him throughout the desert, but then we, we finish uh, him on the cross crucified and like both he's supported by the father and both is, it's like, it's because of the father and he's leaning on the father and he's dependent on the father and it's never independent for Jesus. It's never his own project. It's never his own thing. Um, so when the temptations happen um, and he's asked to deny like his sonship, he's like, no, basically get out of my face. Like I'm a beloved son of the father. And so therefore I won't do these things. The same thing is true on the cross, uh, agony in the garden, right? He first has this dialogue with the father and like, if this is your will, let this cup pass. But if not, um, I'll do it. And so this is once again, just part and parcel with how Jesus is. It's never about himself. It's never focused on me. It's never about, hey, I'm just gonna do this to make myself feel better. Um, but no, this is because the father's asked me, but even more so, this is where I keep relationship with the father. And so just allow Lent to be this this leaning on the beloved and allowing him to to bring you to the place where he desires you to be as a, like by being, yeah, once again, by being vulnerable, but, even, but once again, leaning on him, allowing him to carry you as opposed to, oh, I'm going to do it myself. I'm just going to walk to the place where I think I need to be because I think we totally miss it. That's with checking in if we do have a spiritual director or we do have a confessor or just somebody, once again, we've spoken about this before in previous Lent episodes, but just checking in with somebody else. Um, much like the question uh, that you asked, hey, am I off about my childhood experience? You know, like being brought back to being a kid. Somebody, yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. But, um, but just with the, with the priest in particular, somebody who is maybe more seasoned in the spiritual life, say, hey, this is what I desire. Um, and it might not even be in a conversation, it might be a couple of conversations you have to have, but it is always helpful just to make sure that you're not the center of whatever's happening, but Jesus is. And just another way to say that, I think the big thing for the postulants is like, they're not in control. You know, they can't, it's not like a one, their show, you know? And so as you're teaching them to do things that they're creating space, but they're also don't have control over it. So that's why submitting themselves to someone else. And so sometimes we can go through land and be completely in control, do hard things, but could be completely in control. Right. And so the reality of maybe doing less, but being more intentional takes a little control away from us, but that's going to be better for us, you know, in, in the, in the long run. So anyway, I think it, the conversion is is me letting go, mm -hmm. you know, and, and but I can't do that by myself. So again, needing help could could be necessary. Mm -hmm. There's a a line, I don't know exactly who it who it comes from. It's like some story of like a novice master or whatever. And it's not. It's I don't know. That's actually a true story because this isn't really how a novice master would speak and or some director of it or something like that they're like oh hey look at you know um like father pt he's he's really like he's really great at fasting and said no one <laughs> <laughs> sorry and then father innocent the abbot says that's because <laughs> the he's, sultan that's because he's full on the admiration of others and i think that's like a, it's like a good mm. good line and it kind of a good sort of insight into sort of the realities is right like we can do a lot of these hard things but they're they're not being fueled by a response to the invitation of god and they're not being fueled by love of god they're being fueled by um something else right and that something else can be my desire to do something hard for god out of like a place of pride that they can it, it can't so you can be fueled by pride it can be fueled by the admiration of others it can be fueled by sort of um it can be filled from like a sort of like a fearful approach to God or something. Like that. There's just a lot of other things that can really feel it. And so it looks like uh, externally, it looks like you're doing something really heroic and really beautiful and really whatever, uh, really faithful. But again, if it's not properly discerned and properly formed and properly uh, oriented, um, it can come from just a negative place, be fueled by the negative thing. And then the result of that isn't actually what we're talking about at all. Um, but it can just be kind of more, more pride or whatnot. Do you have something? You need to talk about that? You can. Okay. Um, because Jesus talks about this chapter five, chapter six, Matthew, obviously concerning fasting, right? At the end of the day, not, don't disfigure your face. Don't just wash your face. Be hygienic, please, during Lent. That's what Jesus says. <laughs> get a and haircut. Get a haircut <clears throat> or use gel. And, but, your father who sees in se who's in secret um, and who sees in secret will repay you at the end of the day. That's, that should be the, 
the thing which which pushes us forward or at least the reason why we're doing these these penances but but it's about a person it's about about him about jesus about the holy spirit but encountering someone and that should change everything we orient our lives towards this relationship which as pope benedict talks about being christian is not a result of an ethical choice or lofty idea but the encounter with an event a person which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction and so I'm not just falling idea, I'm not falling in love with this idea like, oh, I'd be really good if if I could do these things, you know, or the idea that, oh, this is just what I need to do to kind of overcome these things, or or this lens gonna be the best because I'm gonna go for it and give up meat and and water, you know? And and so um the thing is that's just falling in love with ourselves and ideas and, and things that don't necessarily give us life, but can we radically orient our life towards the one who loves us, where he changes everything, where the apostles you know, the apostles' lives are different. Saints' lives are different. Our lives can be different if we simply place our trust in this person called Jesus because that's what he desires. And even more so, like things just look a lot different when he's a part of the, not just a solution, but he's a part of everything. And so that's the invitation, I think, for Lent that Father Mark Toops invites us to to sit in. But I think it's a, a, life, a lifelong yeah. thing, not just the season of Lent. It's something that every single day of our life <laughs> should be like that. And maybe that's the the gift, brothers, or the call for us this Lent is is maybe to to have an examination. Like there's there's a question that we should ask ourselves in it, whether that's like in our journal or in our personal prayer. And it probably should be maybe at the end of our day to say, hey, listen, how like when you when you're with the Lord, like how has my Lent in practice um, invited me or created a space for me to encounter you in a deeper way, Jesus? Like how did how that how did that go today? Mm-hmm. Like if I'm, you know, if I'm going to fast from food, like Jesus, how did this fast bring me closer to you? And so again, if you, it's not about piling up things, but it's about asking the right questions and, and really sitting there. Mm-hmm. So we we don't let like weeks and weeks pass of Lent and, and we're just doing these things, but they're, they're not, they're not um, providing the space of intimacy. And so maybe that's just like the daily examine. Okay. Is this actually helping me Jesus like encounter you? So whether it's with food or sacrifice or like almsgiving or 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 prayer, like what whatever it is we're deciding to do, I think we should just be super intentional. Is this at the service of intimacy with you, Jesus? How did it go today? Like, does it? And again, it's not magic, and it's not. I, we don't have to be critical, but we want to make sure we we notice. Mm-hmm. We want to notice notice the movements of grace, even if they're simple. It's beautiful. Like, yes, that that really helped me. Like, I'm hungry today, Lord. And and I, I made the decision to say like I'm gonna I'm gonna forego that food so that I can I can make the prayer that I'm actually more hungry for you. I did that today, and I trust that you're gonna make it beautiful. I like it. I don't have to like dissect it. Um, but I, I guess I'm moved by the daily examine that these things, this grace, we're seeing and noticing the movements rather than just like letting weeks pass. Well, I don't know. I think it is, you know, but maybe asking the questions every day. Yeah. I love that because then it keeps us in relationship specifically with the one who is calling us to do these things, right? It's not like I'm stuck in this expectation that I have to be perfect this Lent. Um, if I, in prayer, decide that, sorry, that was weird. I touched your leg underneath the table. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I decide, okay, the Lord's the Lord's inviting me to uh, fast three days a week, you know, uh, the church fast. And then like one Wednesday, I don't do it. Um, it's just, I could talk to the Lord about that. Like, Hey Lord, I, I struggled happened, with this today, yeah. you know, like, and is it keeping me in relationship with you? Um, and he's like, Hey, it's okay. Like, this is some, once again, it's, it's because your relationship with me that it's okay, but we'll try again tomorrow. As opposed to, I think if it's about ourselves, our own project, we can beat ourselves up about it and say, I'm failing. And then the, the disappointment comes in. And, and like, once again, our father's not asking us or speaking to us in this way. Instead, I think with the check-in and stalk, talking to the Lord about it, we can then <coughs> keep him at the middle, but even more so the expectations are just easier to manage because it's not about us. It's about relationship with him and how he desires to speak to us. And it becomes an invitation to mercy. Like right. if I didn't do it well, mm-hmm. then it can be mercy. Like he can be merciful Right. and we're still in relationship. And maybe that's the point. Right. Like I'm so weak. I didn't do well. And she's mm-hmm. like, Hey, like I'm with you. Right. And like right. that actually changes us mm-hmm. instead of being like, well, that, that I guess, I guess we'll, you know, just beginning, like start again tomorrow. I guess I had like a rough day and we mm-hmm. get critical of ourselves, right. but it becomes an invitation of mercy and mm-hmm. that changes us yeah. as well. And I think that often in real life as well, um, self-focus can lead to, to self-criticism, self-condemnation, self-hatred, like that's just real. And so Lent is not about hating ourselves. 
Once, like when, when we're focused on, on Jesus, even if we mess up or even if we fall short, we learn to love ourselves in the midst of that. Cause that's what the cross is. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting. Like the fruit, the fruit of my, me focusing on myself, ironically leads me to a deeper like division in myself or lack of communion in myself or criticism of myself or lack of mercy or compassion on myself. Right. So ideally at the end of, at the end of Lent, we love ourselves more because of the fasting. We love ourselves more because of the space that's made in our hearts rather than like my, my like walking through the French line. I'm like kind of beat myself up during Lent and just like put, I'm going to put myself in my place during yeah. Lent. You know, you're just like, whoa, what? You know, let, me, so, let me know how that goes. <laughs> but, but I think for most guy, guys, guys and gals listening to this podcast, that spirit is going to be more subtle. Like the, the ego lifting, it's like, why are you, you're probably insecure. That's why you're lifting that way. So yeah. there's probably a deeper self-hatred there yeah. or self-condemnation there you know, rather than just like, look, because mm -hmm. the, the strong guys don't need to do that, yeah. right? In a way, right? So anyway, just like, that, again, at the end of the day, did I love myself more today with Jesus in the middle, with Jesus mm -hmm. as the one who's leading me outside of myself rather than just like I'm fasting and I'm refraining and I'm and doing all these hard things because at the end of the day, I don't like who I am. Mm. right so to, to experience that love is what the goal is i think and that's the gift of the cross it went culminates in this experience of being loved by jesus on the cross and then if, if we if we do it right that's not what lens is about but we have space to receive that mm -hmm. we have openness to receive that we have availability and intimacy to receive his love for me rather than just being like this heroic like look what i did for myself this one thank you guys i think uh, I think um, what I want to say as well is just kind of something to keep an eye out for is I do think that novelty and intensity are um, kind of like sugar for the ego and and something to look out for, right? Uh, I, I've shared the example before of when we were in the desert a couple of years ago and we're doing whatever it was, like day 18 or something like that. And we're going through that. I remember the day. Yeah, 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 that was a good one. That was you, were, you did great that day. But we were like, we were doing this like wet canyon or anything. It's like a pretty hype for it. We threw on the wet suits. Like, okay, this this feels intense. This feels novel. All of that kind of got me excited about it. And we got there, and it was just like a puddle that we could have avoided, but intentionally chose to go and like roll around in like a little puppy. <laughs> and then oh we gosh. kept going. Right? And, did and you feel like a kid after? No, I did not feel like a kid after. <laughs> I acted okay. like a, I acted like a little kid yeah, after. Yeah, you definitely acted like a kid after. <laughs> <laughs> that takes you back to your childhood. <laughs> um, but right there was like, I would have, I would like, I would have enjoyed doing that really intense, really novel and thing even because of all that and it would have made me feel good about myself and, and it would have made me you know been a good story to tell on the podcast in the future but in like a humble way <laughs> no okay okay i'll tell the story you want me to tell the story i don't want to tell the story you want me to tell the okay so here's what um but uh and so similarly i just think that like there's a similar thing is that when we're we're, we're choosing our what we're going to be doing for lent if it's too intense, it's too fresh. Like just to just to keep an eye out of whether or not we're doing the really hard thing and the really intense thing again, because those kind of make <laughs> us sort of feel good about ourselves. Um, so I think that now it's like we've kind of given the okay, like hey, look out, don't do these things. So I think hey, what are what are some good types of practices that we can propose to? We have a really broad listener base and so um in particular we probably can't go too much into the the fasting side of things without knowing people but um like i do think for example i think um i like the like the phone fast like from eight to eight i think that's like a good lenten practice for most people like where you don't use your phone from eight nine, eight p.m to eight a.m it's okay. a good idea I thought it was eight a.m to eight p.m <laughs> don't use your phone i like that <laughs> um I think I like that one. That's one where it's like if, if there's somebody, a space, there's a space to it. it. It's not. It's like you're probably really are going to be annoyed by it. It's going to be really hard to persevere in it. Um, it's really going to work some primary muscles we need to work. And if somebody finds out about it, they're like they're not really going to care. You know. Um, I think that's a good one. I do like the nightly examine. I think especially if you're not doing that to do like a a, a nightly examine. Um, and to actually be consistent with it and to do it well, maybe say it's like a 10 minute prayer. I think that's going to be a lot harder than you think and also more fruitful than you think. Those are the first two that come to mind. 
This is, I mean, I'm sorry, Father Mark Mary, because I think you're you're onto something with practicalities, and and I agree with you. Um, but this is just what came to my heart. So it's just it is what it is. But I think are we, you going to recite a poem? <laughs> <laughs> I'm insecure. No, <laughs> put that note don't down. Be, I'm just kidding. Don't be edited. Don't, don't be really edited. You, you can do whatever this. you want. I'm I'm here because God's will. I don't, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I do think we, this is the word that came to mind. I think we consume a lot of things. And so I do think a part of Lent needs to be like, what do I consume a lot of? And, and that could be like, I consume a lot of technology or not a lot of noise or, and that's why food is important. I think we can like, like, and I think Katie's okay to, to use an example, but like I, we've laughed because Katie like gives up sweets or sugar during Lent. And, but she's done that her whole life. And she's like, I know, but it's a problem. Like I, like I, and now as a mom, like she's a lot more disciplined, but like, she just likes, she just likes candy or sweets, but she notices she consumed these things. And so now she wants to make a space for it. And so I don't want to like, I don't want to opt out or just like, oh yeah, just like, it's always about food or candy or just give up candy. But I want to invite people to, to notice what they consume a lot of. And to say, okay, like I'm going to actually get a distance for what I grasp at to fill me in some sort of capacity, whether it's food, time, um, technology, like sensory stuff. And, and maybe to say, okay, like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to just create some sort of distance. And so like, sometimes I like, okay, like, is there a technology thing that I can do Monday through Friday that I, that I can like get a distance from. And then, and then on the wind, on the weekends, I can, you know, watch a movie with my family or whatever. Um, or is it just like, I'm going to give up sugar or, I'm going to give up, you know, I'm instead of having, you know, I think this is a big one. Instead of having like five cups of coffee, I'm going to just have one or two, whatever. It's like, those are big things. I can, don't give me that look. Um, <laughs> like I would, I'm not saying give up caffeine, but I'm saying I consume a lot of it. So what would happen if I just said, okay, I'm going to have, I'm going to have a cup of coffee in the morning and then at lunch, but then I'm not going to have caffeine otherwise. It's just a good thing to lean into the consumption and how I even feel about like making some distance there. I think um, a part of it too is like if we're we're asking the Lord um, just to know like what would I be uncomfortable like not having you know and I, I'm not talking about going without showers or you know like like those comforts but meaning like just conveniences like okay how would I be inconvenienced by certain things and just asking the Lord is are you are you asking me to press into these places um, and sometimes the answer is no but but yeah like so for example with the phone like man I just really like you know, whatever, watching certain things on the, on the train, on the way to work. And maybe the Lord's asking me not to (laughs) to to watch the Netflix series, or if it is a a specific series you're watching, or like, how is this serving my relationship with the Lord? Is it, or is it not? And so I think there's that, but also too, I'm just just recently just bigger fan of silence in the sense of, yeah, just a lot of noise, (laughs) a lot of noise happening in my life. So maybe it's, it's not, having spotify on all the time or maybe it's not you know my my run doing something uh that just causes noise and and it's giving simple things up like that and i think yeah the novelty like sometimes you want to go for the the newest oh i'm gonna do this thing because nobody ever has, has, ever has ever done that but once again like what's the lord asking for me in my life particularly like what's the thing that i can create space to encounter him and it might look different than your friends where um yeah, if you're a mother with a bunch of kids, it's going to look different than a single person, you know? But just to invite the Lord, I think once again, like, okay, what's that convenience that I kind of like leaning on that I probably can give up and it's going to be tough. But like, once again, just asking the Lord, is this a place where you want me to press into? And so, what are you giving up, bro? Um, Spotify. Um, <laughs> but I, I've recently working with some guys and one guy just gave up Spotify outright less noise and I was just so proud of him. And then one guy just recently did the same thing with YouTube, just like done too much noise, too much temptation, too mm-hmm. much going on there. And I was, I was like, Whoa, I mean, that's so good. You know, um, like a, a heroic decision to make a disconnection from something. Right. Um, so I just be, I, my, my heart is just like, just be bold and like give up something that, that allows like a real, that you feel that. Mm-hmm that you feel it for, for the reason of just like, yeah, I spend a lot of time and I consume that a lot and, and just be able to really feel it. And then what are you going to do? How is Jesus going to enter that space when you want to go watch a video or you want to turn on YouTube, uh, YouTube or Spotify? 
um, like it'd be awesome just to take a big heroic step this this Lent to make some space for the Lord. Yeah, and just once again to emphasize that last point as far as like allow that space that previously occupied Spotify time to be filled with Jesus and to some sort of like encounter with him. When I was in college- That's the whole point, yeah. Yeah, that's the whole point of it. Because when I was in college, I gave up video games because I played a lot of video games. And what'd you do with what'd that I time? What'd I do that time? <laughs> I watch Disney movies instead. Like I'm not even lying. <laughs> <laughs> so like I throw on Aladdin or I throw on like that other boy? But <laughs> a whole I, new world. For me, it was just about like, hey, I gave up video games and okay, great. At the end of the, <laughs> this, this Lent, okay, I did it. But what was that time spent with? <laughs> you know what I mean? So just don't be college. Social routine. media wouldn't be another big thing. People consume a lot on social mm-hmm. media. And again, that's I'm not quite sure how life-giving and helpful that is. Right. Some some are, but like the reality of when you compare and you, or maybe like maybe a better way to do social media, maybe not itself, give up scrolling for Lent. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I have, I have 10 minutes before work or I have this or that. I'm going to give up like just looking at everybody else's stuff. Like, I just don't know if that's helpful. You know? So, All right, I have one more thing. I'm oh, sorry. It just came to me. I don't, I think this is, I don't need to add too much, but what about going to bed and getting up at the same time? That's a great one. I think it's just it, like the discipline again. I'm like, I'm, I'm being intentional about my life. And if I go to bed, that means I can get up. And if I can get up, maybe I have time for pr- more time for prayer or like, what does it mean? Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm having this conversation soon because the postulants are getting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, so, um, the postulants are getting ready to go home and uh, I'm not going to age this podcast. Um, but they have a vacation soon. Yes. Mm. Happy Sunday, second Sunday of Advent. <laughs> <laughs> like pink, it wasn't pink me. Candle, pink candle, we're coming next week for you. <laughs> coming for you. Um, so the postures are getting ready to go home and I have this talk with him about what does it mean to live like a consecrated man, right? And so I, ca- I say that because we're, we're consecrated religious or they're preparing to be. But I could say that for like, what does it mean to live as a consecrated Christian? I think that means something for our lives in, in like every part of our lives that actually, mm. like it has claim on us. Mm-hmm. But as consecrated men, like it, that, it influences everything we do from when I go to bed and when I get up. And if I'm called to pray, that means that everything else is, is around that, mm-hmm. right? So I, I, I know that not everybody's called to live a consecrated life like us, but I do think there's something about being baptized and being Christian that that's the center point. So my whole life takes shape around that. And so going to bed and getting up, I think is a, is a concrete step to saying my life is ordered around something. And that is my relationship with God. And so like, I can get the rest I need. I can, I can not do pointless things by staying up later and I can get up and pray in that silent protective time. I mean, I feel deeply about it. And I know that we know so many people that do this well, mm. you know, they live ordered lives, but I do think it's a great thing for Lynn to say, you know, I'm gonna go to bed at 10 and I'm gonna get up at 10. <laughs> You know, I'm going to go to bed 10, get up at six or seven. And then like, I love that kind of sleep. (laughs) (laughs) I never get it, but I was just recently on the roads uh, at a wedding recently in Oklahoma. And I got to stay at the rectory with the priest. It was awesome. And I got back from the reception probably around nine and the the priest was there. (laughs) (laughs) Edit that out. (laughs) But the, the pastor was there and me. It was awesome. We spent some like fraternal time together. And then I said, and I kind of excused myself. I think I'm going to go to bed. Father, it was 10. And, and he was like, Father, you're, that's a, such a good, that's such a good movement to have a bedtime. And I was, and we kind of talked about that for a second. He said he was recently just on a retreat with a bunch of priests. And I, I don't know if it was a bishop who gave the retreat or another priest, but like his closing advice to the priests on the retreat was guys go to bed, go to bed. You stay up way too late doing things you regret because you just don't go to sleep. You know, and he was really passionate about it. I was like, wow, Father. But like, isn't it true? Like, oh, I'll just watch another thing or oh, I'll call this person or oh, I'll kind of, and then all of a sudden it's like two hours past when you could have gone to bed and it just kind of affects everything, right? Mm-hmm. So part of it is just like, go to yeah, bed. the order, go to bed. Go to bed, get some rest, get up early and be able to do the things that we've always talked about doing to, to make space for the Lord and to pray and have the silence and all that. But that was just recently and I was like, wow, okay. I know. Go to bed. Okay. It's okay. Some of us struggle with going to bed. Some of us struggle with being disciplined and going to bed at 10 o'clock. We love you, bro. Don't it's worry. It's okay. Don't worry. I'm still here. Yeah, you are. <laughs> with bags under my eyes, but I'm still here. <laughs> you look great. You look great. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I think, those, yeah, I think I, I like the bedtime wake up thing a lot. I like the, the hours thing a lot. I like, honestly, this is pushing back against you guys a little bit. Just a little bit. Bring it. 
Kind of. You just have so Honestly, much power. I think what you just have so much power in this podcast. You have the <laughs> editing power. You have pushback power. Can you push that button real quick for me. <laughs> okay, you're, you're free to speak. Is now. right. I think I don't really know if anyone's going to do this, but this is my mindset. Is like it would be better to share your like your screen time with a person like once a week. Then maybe like, but like, to just not, but also like to not change your behavior. What do you mean with the screen time? What do I mean by that? It's like, like to let to just sort of like to let honest somebody honest like to I have honest accountability and having someone honestly see how you do with your screen time, and to like begin there, mm-hmm. and I, mean, then, I think that's what we're and co- then down the road like to step back from it. I mean that's the gradual approach. I think right is it to step in the right direction to have accountability and. Like, don't change because you have to, but just, like, let someone in. I, I agree. I mean, I, I don't think that's... And, and not that you, the screen time thing isn't doesn't work. But I do, like, I feel like even that might be even a better thing. And that's, I think, just to just be seen, even in your poverty there, I think is very Lenten. How does that facilitate an encounter with the Lord? Well, no, so... <laughs> Well, it's like it's like this honest, like well, because I think that's the thing of like being sort of like you're being seen. I, I know I, I'm kind of being funny, but I like to, if it if the if the goal is transparency to be seen by another, great. But hopefully, there's that facility you sort of yeah. That's that I that think that that's person. the idea. Is then then the next step is okay. Now, like I've honestly assess this, and or yeah, or maybe you're trying to step back, but because the the hard part is this is like you maybe now I have somebody else seeing, I'm seeing it. So now I'm going to try and do really good. And it's kind of like a hiding type of thing. Yeah, like, it makes sense. like what's driving me is now the concern of their opinion. I don't know. That was, that's good though. That was probably a I think it's, distraction, but kind of, I don't think so. I think it's good to wrestle with it for sure. It's a good step. I think we're part of the, I kind of come from a, I'm kind of come from an, a lens too, that uh, YouTube hurts a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. And so, the reality of just like, yeah, that maybe that's my lens. The intensity of my proposal to give up YouTube is because it hurts guys, mm-hmm. you know, in, in a lot of ways, especially with sexual sin. So kind of my, my intense response there is just like, what are you going to do about that boys? Right. You know, anyway, most, most, I don't even know, but a, I don't know. A large majority of our audience probably doesn't struggle with that, but sometimes it just like, and I don't think they have to be mutually exclusive. I think they're both the right step to say, I have to really look at, at what I'm willing to, to to sacrifice here, but at the same time, accountability that I, I need to open the space up to someone. And that might be the right step for me now. Yeah. I like the transparency a lot though, for sure. And I think there's like, yeah, certain, yeah, I, would, I mean, just to be on it, it's like, if like you're struggling with pornography, the proposal is not like, okay, just tell somebody before you try and step back from it, just tell somebody no, how no, much you're looking not. at every week. Yeah. You know what I mean, uh, that's not the idea. If it's a, a serious thing, then we need a more serious response. But I just, I really value either you looking at your own screen time, honestly, or sharing it and even sharing it with somebody else as just a part of really facing that reality. And then I think from that, people will make changes. I think it's a good idea. Anyway, it's all about Jesus. It's not about me, Father PT. It's not about you. It's not about Father Innocent. Thank God. It's not about Father Angelus. It's not about me. (laughs) (laughs) Not even about you, Rom. (laughs) That's how we love Rob. (laughs) All right. Um, That was a. We're back into a longer episode. Good job, everybody. I thought that was going to be a short one. Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. What does that mean? By the way, if you're giving up Spotify, it's okay because we're on Apple (laughs) Podcasts. Or YouTube. Well, we're, oh, got, we're not going to YouTube either. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> um, we're unformed. I'm thinking about giving up podcasts. All episodes way. are unformed. <laughs> Starting now. Like, can you hurry up? I got to go to the restroom. You can, give up your, <laughs> like, <laughs> you can give your attitude for that. Yeah. Wow. We're back to being spicy, huh? I'm <laughs> back to Who hasn't those? said a prayer yet? Father Anderson? I would love to say can, a prayer. Can you say a long in the name prayer? of the Father, <laughs> and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we love you and adore you, and thank you just for this grace to be invited with your Son into the desert we just we just ask for just this deeper trust in him um, this deep deeper personal experience of his love for us his presence for us and jesus we just give you permission to do with us what you desire this lent we ask this all through christ our lord amen 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 amen
Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, especially to Shannon, D'Artez, and the rest of the folks down at Sacred Heart of Jesus Parish in Broussard, oh, yeah. Louisiana, who did a little book study on Habits for Holiness and sent a couple of very nice packages to St. Leopold's Friar. So cool. thank you all. Much appreciated. Anything else? Nope. Happy land. Happy, Happy land. land, everybody. Peace. Bye. And do every weather, love. You have my shelter, Lord. So take me by the hand.